I um, I'm thinking of building a delivery robot, and I need actuation. Yes. Can you help me? Yes, absolutely. We have a line of quasi direct drives off the shelf, okay. designed specifically for that. Different sizes, you can build the entire robot with it, and we actually have several people doing this. Okay, so have you built the robots yourself, or are you talking about other people? No, other people are doing other this. People are yes. And so tell me a little bit about that actuator, why you should be excited about it. So this is our family of high efficiency joints, highly integrated quasi direct drive actuator, planetary geared, very dynamic, very efficient, um, very well coolable. So you have high continuous torques. And the big magic is the built-in controller. So there is torque estimation, cogging compensation, friction compensation, all built in, such that you can really plug and play this into your robot. And from the get-go, the sim to real gap is pretty small because this thing behaves almost like an ideal actuator from the outside. You command it something and it does it, okay. more or less. So planetary drives, um, what's the gear ratio? They're all about 25 to 28 to 1. It's two-stage planetaries. Right. And sometimes people get afraid of this, right? Ooh, it, is it going to be robust or what about the lifetime or cost or complexity? The fun thing is this is a speciality of Maxon as a whole, right? We're, we, we do have our own gear division, and they're really good with such highly integrated gears. So the gears are over torque rated, impact rated in these drives, because if you build a humanoid, yeah. it's going to crash and it's going to operate in highly demanding environments, right? Well, do you know what it does all day, loving humanoids? Fall and stomp. Yes, exactly. That's why you need robust yeah, gears. Look, exactly. If your humanoid cannot operate for years and tens, if not hundreds of millions of load cycles, then it's not going to work well out in the field. And we test and rate these drives for exactly that. Okay, now you've got some yeah. little apparatus here. Can you explain what this is and why I should be impressed with it? So we get, <laughs> yes, it's an apparatus. And when people touch it, we get two reactions. Reaction one is like, what's it doing? It's absolutely not doing anything. And reaction two is when a person from the industry comes, they're like, oh my God, what? no, how can this be? The point what it's doing is it's exactly this. It's controlling for zero newton meter at the output port. So the, the whole torque controller is running, controlling for zero newton meter, and all the compensations are running, the friction and the cogging compensation. And what you feel is nothing, yeah. which is amazing, right? Because that's how it should be for a very well linearized drive. Exactly. exactly. Now, is something going to happen if I do this? Yeah, I can turn the friction compensation off and stops doing that exactly. We need to, we need to compensate the gear losses and the friction of the output seal because these things are IP67 rated. Wow, so that's something to consider. And these are cost effective, right? The yeah. planetary gear is pretty cheap to manufacture, but it's still robust. And you don't have to deal with the hollow shaft. This is also an advantage. Nowadays in humanoid robots, a lot of customers say actually they don't need the hollow shaft, right? They're not worried about the, routing the cable inside the linkages anymore. So they're fine with not having a hollow shaft. It's more cost effective. Mm -hmm. Strain wave gears tend to be a bit more expensive yeah. uh, and yeah. harder to scale up. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing, scaling it up is that I'm really excited that my human rate is going to be so good. I'm going to have to ramp up to a million yes. units a year. Yes, yes. So can you, now I'm going to need 30 of these yes. to route my human rate. Yes. How hard will it be for you to be able to produce 30 million of these a year? Okay, so we are here with Mario Maurer, which some of you may say sounds a month well like another famous person with a last name, but I'll let you all figure out who that person may be. Uh, and we're going to play a little game like, okay? I, um, I'm thinking of building a DNA robot. And I need actuation. Yes. Can you help me? Yes, absolutely. We have a line of quasi direct drives off the shelf, okay. designed specifically for that. Different sizes, you can build the entire robot with it. And we actually have several people doing this. Okay, so have you built the robots yourself or are you talking about other people? No, other people are doing other this. People are... Yes. And so tell me a little bit about that actuator and why you should be excited about it. So this is our family of high efficiency joints, highly integrated quasi direct drive actuator, planetary geared. Very dynamic, very efficient, um, very well coolable. So you have high continuous torques. And the big magic is the built-in controller. So there is torque estimation, cogging compensation, friction compensation, all built in, such that you can really plug and play this into your robot. And from the get-go, the sim to real gap is pretty small because this thing behaves almost like an ideal actuator from the outside. You command it something and it does it. More or less. So planetary drives, um, what's the gear ratio? They're all about 25 to 28 to 1. It's two-stage planetaries. Right. And sometimes people get afraid of this, right? Ooh, it, is it going to be robust? Or what about the lifetime or cost or complexity? The fun thing is this is a speciality of Maxon as a whole, right? We're, 
We, we do have our own gear division and they're really good with such highly integrated gears. So the gears are over torque rated, impact rated in these drives, because if you build a humanoid, yeah. it's going to crash and it's going to operate in highly demanding environments, right? Well, do you know what it does all day, loving humanoids? Fall. And stomp, yes, exactly. That's why you need robust yeah, gears. Look, exactly. If your humanoid cannot operate for years and tens, if not hundreds of millions of load cycles, then it's not going to work well out in the field. And we test and rate these drives for exactly that. Okay, now you've got some yeah. little apparatus here. Can you explain what this is and why I should be impressed with it? So we get, <laughs> yes, it's an apparatus. And when people touch it, we get two reactions. Reaction one is like, what's it doing? It's absolutely not doing anything. And reaction two is when a person from the industry comes, they're like, oh my God, what? no, how can this be? The point what it's doing is it's exactly this. It's controlling for zero newton meter at the output port. So the the whole torque controller is running, controlling for zero newton meter, and all the compensations are running, the friction and the cogging compensation. And what you feel is nothing, yeah. which is amazing, right? Because that's how it should be for a very well linearized drive. Exactly. exactly. Now, is something going to happen if I do this? Yeah, I can turn the friction compensation off and stops doing that exactly. We need to, we need to compensate the gear losses and the friction of the output seal because these things are IP67 rated. Yep. IP67, that's very good. That's, that's also something you need for a well scalable robot that is yes. outdoors and exposed. In the water. So that means and dust. Dust and water. But year 67, yes. that means it can be really high on that. One meter. One meter. For water. 30 minutes. Yeah. You don't go swimming with the thing, but it means. You can. Getting, yes. Yes. I mean, yes. Because I've had a lot of things for just a second in the water. Instead. Yes. No, in harsh environments humanoid in, dust, in industrials, no. you need it, and also dust is going to be an issue, right? Now, is it possible to have this as a um, hollow shaft? Nope. Ah, not this family, because the planetary gear is too highly integrated. We do have planetary gear drives similar to these for customer-specific applications, where we do have a hollow shaft through the sun gear, but you need to go up with the gear stage. Those are three-stage gears, uh, three-stage three, three gears, but then you can actually have a hollow shaft, a small one, like 10 millimeters through the planetary gear. Okay. We do have a family of drive with hollow shafts. Those are strain wave gear based drives. Ah, so I was gonna say, okay, strain um, But we don't use those for humanoids, right? Or these are more bespoke OEM systems. They don't have the controller built in. We typically use those for medical robots, surgical robots, where you need to position the arms slowly and precisely, yes. Yes, also a large family of those. So I'm coming on in here. Yeah, you know, I'm considering having uh, harmonic drives in my actuator. Are you going to talk me out of it? Depends on your application. Sometimes I might, sometimes not. Okay. Depends really on what you want to build. Okay, so let's say what I want to build, that would be the perfect application. By, by all access, should be talk me out. To use a harmonic drive? Yeah, say why I shouldn't use a harmonic drive. Or application. Are you conscious about the cost? Of course. Did you check the bearing system on the wave generator side? Are you sure that the axial and radial and bending loads of the wave generator are being That's taken care of? What I, a little bit concerned with because I'm planning on building my joint out of this. So like this is kind of like either the right of my knee or my elbow. Yes. And of course this has to produce torque so I can do that. Yeah. But you've ever heard of tennis elbow? You know what that is? Yes. That's like taking strikes this way. Yes, yes. Which means if I'm going to be getting hit that way, exactly what you're saying, hmm, but what's you, going to happen? Which, but that's the output bearing. Yeah. We have a stiff cross roller bearing in these yeah. as well and in the strain wave gears as well. So, so that's okay. This is good. And can I do it with a strain wave? Or what, what are yes. The, the, yes, but I'm concerned about the wave generator bearing on the input side of the gear because yeah. these are running at high speeds, yeah. driven by the motor at high gear ratio. And their subjects, the, 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 the strain wave gear tries to always push the wave generator out of the, the cup. Ah. Not a lot of people know this. And this puts a lot of load on that bearing. And if your bearing structure is not dimensioned properly because you want to be lightweight and everything, it's going to mess with the bearing over time and it's going to make noise. And of course, okay, you're talking now about a humanoid robot. Then, of course, efficiency is a topic. Yes. These things are nice because of torque density. Yes. If you look at it, right, you can yeah. have high ratios. There are two big disadvantages. One, torque sensing is very hard. In the quasi-direct drive, you do the torque sensing via the motor current and a exactly. fancy piece of software. Here, in order to be reasonably accurate, you need an output torque sensor because the gear is too nonlinear and too temperature dependent. Its behavior and forwards and backwards is too different. 
that you can have an, uh, a feed-forward compensation system that estimates the output torque accurate enough. And the efficiency, of course, is an order of magnitude worse, right? This has an efficiency from input to output of more than 80%. Mm -hmm. And here we're typically in the range of 40 to 50, 60%. Okay. Okay. Oh. Wow, so that's something to consider. And these are cost-effective, right? The yeah. planetary gear is pretty cheap to manufacture, but it's still robust. And you don't have to deal with the hollow shaft. This is also an advantage. Nowadays, in humanoid robots, a lot of customers say, actually, they don't need the hollow shaft, right? They're not worried about the, routing the cable inside the linkages anymore. So they're fine with not having a hollow shaft. It's more cost effective. Strain wave gears tend to be a bit more expensive yeah. and yeah. harder to scale up. Well, that's the other thing. Scaling it up is that I'm really excited that my Himlin R8 is going to be so good. I'm going to have to ramp up to a million yes. units a year. Yes, yes. So can you... Now I'm going to need 30 of these yes. to route my human oil. Yes. How hard will it be for you to be able to produce 30 million of these a year? We did an analysis of this guy, which is our largest one, which has 140 newton meter peaks, two kilograms of mass. Mm -hmm. And we did an analysis of what would it take to produce 1 million a year of these things. A million is a lot. It's one drive every 14 seconds produced. Yeah. It's 10 metric tons of material leaving the factory every day. That's a large truck full of drives. Mm -hmm. It's 2,000 tons of material every year. It's, that's a lot of or a million, mass, right? A million of those, right? Yes. I didn't tell you I need 30 million of those. It depends on when you need it, right? How fast is the ramp up? So we are thinking about this. We're looking forward into this. This question is relevant. The question is, of course, when? But if we want to play in this game, and it's a quickly scaling, broadly supported game across the globe, right? This whole robotics industry, it's not just humanoids, it's quadrupeds, the mobile manipulators, a lot of systems can benefit from these drives, then we need to smartly think about how to get there. Yeah. And we as Maxon, we can do this. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for sure. We have a global manufacturing footprint, so we can select which, which Asian factory we would use for this, where we would source all the components. But that's something we're actively thinking about, yes. Okay, good. And you are headquartered in Switzerland. Yes. Yes, but we have manufacturing in Germany, South Korea, Hungary, we're all over the globe, and sales units in almost every major jurisdiction. Yeah, that makes sense. Of course, when I, I think of uh, Swiss companies' decision, it's usually the first thing. That yes, yes, and we're also good with, with customer modifications, right? Because when you go into high volume, typically you don't want the off-the-shelf connectors anymore. You want yeah. to integrate the drive exactly. into the robot substructure. We can do this all because we are deeply vertically integrated and everything in here is from our hand, right? We'd happy yeah, to, to, to modify it. Because a lot of times off the shelf is like trying to satisfy everyone. Yes, that's, that's, that's the challenge you need when you, you have when you build a platform. But Maxon is strong with customizations, but you have to do it smartly, right? It's a nice product management challenge to sometimes also be able to say no to a customer and showing them the roadmap when it could make sense for them, right? It's also about educating the customer. That's a sign of a mature company because you know when to say no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Scott, thanks a lot. Chat. Yeah, great. sure. Okay.